this video, I'll be building the world's most satisfying Lego fidget toys. In the past, I've attempted to make fidget toys out of Lego, but they didn't really satisfy me completely. So then I experimented with making fidget toys out of only a Lego brick separator. That video was purely experimental. Today, I wanted to really challenge myself to go all out and use 100 IQ Lego building techniques to achieve fidgeting fulfillment. But it's not gonna be easy. I don't have a huge Lego collection. I keep ending up at the Lego store and buying more and more Lego. Lego's very expensive. I can't blow thousands of dollars on Lego. This isn't daddy's money anymore. So today I'm challenging myself to only use what I already have in my collection. So that complicates things. It leaves me with fewer options of what I can build. How am I supposed to build the world's most satisfying Lego fidget toys with such limitations? I don't know. This might end up being a success or it might end up just being my old ultimate failure. Hopefully I can satisfy you though. I'm feeling optimistic today. While I'm building a way trying to fulfill all of your fidgeting needs, keep an eye out for these cursed Lego builds that are hidden throughout this video. Good luck. For as long as I can remember, I have this tendency to fidget. I have major anxiety. It actually runs in my family. Sadly, I'm not joking. Fidgeting toys allow one's fidgeting tendencies an outlet, which can help calm a person's nerves, relieve stress, and serve as a distraction. <clears throat> so today I'm making my own fidget toys, but out of Lego. I'll keep you updated on whether these ones are actually helping relieve any of my stress. I'm starting off with some simple Lego fidgets that you can build on a $1 budget, and then we'll work our way up to the good stuff. So if you're completely broke, don't worry, I've still got options for you, you lucky ducky. Yes, sir. We're starting from the bottom. This one will probably only cost you like two cents to make. You can just take this piece and then snap on this piece. Wow. It's about as simple and cheap as you can really get. I made it for the unsophisticated folk among you. Yes, sir. With that being said, as simple as it is, the snap is just way too satisfying. So satisfying that I made two of them. And now I'm snapping them together. How is that possible? Another problem with these is that there's not much surface area to grip onto, and that's because this is the $1 budget version. But wait till you see what I build with these snippy snaps later on. It's gonna blow your mind. Fidget spinners are the ultimate fidget toy. They're what everyone thinks of when they think of a fidget toy. I made a very utilitarian version. It may not be very pretty, but it's satisfying nonetheless. It's very gray, very dull, very blah. It needs something. A few moments later. Say hello to Harry the Snail, in case you couldn't tell what he is. To make my fidget spinner more aesthetically pleasing, I'm plopping Harry on top and making his world spin. Well, that's not going according to plan. But luckily for us, Harry has other fidgeting capabilities. I couldn't make Harry himself spin, but I was still itching for a fidget spinning Lego animal. <laughs> Very specific, I know. I'm a guy who knows what he wants. And this is exactly who I wanted. Pablo the Penguin. Yeah! You ever get the urge to slap someone, slap someone in the face? Yes, sir. Instead of slapping real people in the face, I just break out Pablo every time my blood starts boiling. No worries, he takes it like a champ. You could almost say he's built for this. This is his only purpose in life, to be slapped. Press F in the chat for Pablo. I'll come back to him later. I require his services constantly. What could possibly top Pablo? A $1,000 trip to Disney World. Wouldn't that be something? Unfortunately, that's not where we're going. Instead, I invited over this cursed Lego minifigure, which is almost equally as thrilling in my opinion. To amplify the cursed factor of this minifigure, I'm drawing and quartering him. I'm making a few modifications to his torso. I hope he appreciates them, and I hope you do too. His arms are now perfectly fidgetable. It works even better when you take Mickey Mouse out of the equation, but you know, for aesthetic reasons, I like to keep him around. You know what they say in life, when one door opens, another one closes. Repeatedly slamming doors is another fidget that might calm even the most anxious soul. But what good is a door without a castle? Why is there a random castle in my fidget toy video? Well, you see, it's Pablo's castle. This is part of our arrangement. All of those options are for those of you guys balling on a budget. I could make more $1 Lego fidgets, but that's not really what this video is about. I'm here to make the world's most satisfying Lego fidget toys today. Whether I achieve this feat or not is yet to be seen, but here's hoping. To really whet your fidget appetite, I'm starting off my ultimate fidgeting list with Bendy Rainbow DNA. This one's a personal favorite of mine, partially because of how satisfying it is, but also because of how easy it is to build. I pieced together some crisscrosses with some Lego Technic pieces, some beam 
beams and connectors, and I ended up with this ultra satisfying fidget toy. It works great, but there's just one problem. The rainbow is all out of order. I really don't want to take this apart, but I guess I'm left with no choice. This may be on par with the viral button fidget I made in my last LEGO fidgets video. Personally, I think I like this one even better than the button, and that's saying a lot. The thing about this fidget that qualifies it as an S-tier fidget toy is that I can fold it up and take it on the run. Sometimes it accompanies me on my monthly jog. It's extremely portable. Really thought of everything with this one. <laughs> My favorite part about this is you can drop it as many times as you want. In fact, you can even throw it across the room and it won't break. It's indestructible. There's multiple uses for this one. You can use it in the conventional manner. You can snap it shut. You can bend it. Just a little bit. Don't get too crazy. You can hold it like this and press it and it keeps bouncing back. You might lose some circulation in your fingers, but rest assured, it's worth it. And in a couple minutes when you tire of all that, you can turn it into a lightsaber. <laughs> and slap Pablo silly. The possibilities are endless with this one. Starting off strong and getting even stronger. Next up is this little critter. He doubles as a go-kart and he triples as a fidget toy. Earlier in this video, I showed you the budget version of this fidget toy. Very satisfying, but you guys know I'm all about what's on the outside. I wouldn't be caught dead fidgeting with this ugly contraption. I decided to add a bit more flair to it to make it fit my standards a little better. This little blue baby is what I came up with. I like to imagine him as some sort of insect. A little beetle with a nice crunch to it. The main fidgeting aspect of this one is its snappy personality. But I did add in some extra fidgeting capabilities by turning it into a go-kart. This is probably the most stable vehicle I've ever built out of LEGO. To put it to the ultimate test, I set up a brick wall and tried crash testing this LEGO car. Hiya! Moving on, I was determined to make the world's most steampunk-esque fidget spinner known to mankind for no reason whatsoever. I've made several variations of fidget spinners before, but this time I wanted something more. So I looked up a tutorial on how to make a Lego fidget spinner. I gathered all my components, the gears, the Technic beams, everything it requires. The tutorial was very easy to follow, almost too easy. I was starting to feel like maybe this is too good to be true. Life's never been this easy for me. I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. And that's the exact moment my dream steampunk fidget spinner disintegrated into a thousand pieces right in front of my eyes. Anyways, the show must go on. <coughs> After that car wreck, I wanted to redeem myself. So I made an infinity cube, aka a Yashimoto cube, to make up for it. I used all red and yellow pieces as an homage to my favorite restaurant. McDonald's. This one's pretty intense. You kinda have to be a little bit of a genius to put this one together. It looks deceivingly simple, but don't be fooled. There's clearly arithmetic behind this piece. But I will say, if you have an infinite amount of stress in your life, <coughs> this infinity cube is the fidget for you. You're welcome. For a while now, I've been cooped up inside. Haven't been to the beach in years. I wanted to make something ocean-themed to live vicariously through my fidget toys. That's when inspiration struck me, and I immediately thought of one of the most iconic animals in the seven seas the sea anemone. They practically look like living fidget toys, so I didn't have to strain myself for this one. I wanted to make a fidget toy with a ton of tentacles that I can caress as I please. If you look at it from the top view, the blue tentacle might bother you. I just didn't have an exact shade match for the blue, so hence the variation. Despite the setback, I think this one's a top choice for me. Not today's winner though, because if you're too aggressive with it, the tentacles all go flying, and picking them up is just not satisfying. I hope you're left feeling satisfied. Let me know which one's your favorite, and I'll see you here next week.